In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how you can use a software called Keepa to consistently make smart buying decisions for your Amazon business. This tool is pretty much essential to any Amazon business and your ability to read these charts is going to be a massive indicator of how successful your Amazon business will be. So after this video, you're gonna be way more confident in your sourcing decisions for your Amazon business. But if you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. So in this video, we're gonna jump into my computer screen here in just a second. I'll go ahead and break down some specific strategies that I use that help me make over six figures in net profit per year in my Amazon business. And if you're brand new to the channel or want even more free resources to teach you how to sell on Amazon, link directly beneath me is going to be my free Discord community. There's over 34,000 people in there sharing a ton of free information. Would love to see you in there, but let's go ahead and jump into the video. So I've gone ahead and pulled up an example of a product. We can go ahead and break down here. I'll show you exactly what we're looking at down here. So Keepa is a tool that's gonna embed right here on your pages when you're looking on Amazon. And if this looks complicated right now, it is pretty complicated, especially as you're just starting, this probably looks like rocket science. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We'll break it down step by step and make it way easier to digest. So I'm gonna throw off a bunch of stuff and we'll just go ahead and break it down one by one here. Let's just go ahead and start with this green line right here. This is called the sales rank of an item. This essentially just shows you how fast that this item is selling over time. So for example, right here you can see this green line is dropping from about 25,000 ish that means it was the 25,000th best selling toy on July 16th right there at 9 p.m. or whatever and then you know a couple weeks later July 28th it was the 11,000th best selling toy and you can see right here it was dropping over time this just tells me that the toy was getting a little bit more popular during that time period for whatever reason and for us as sellers we like to see these numbers getting lower because this means our items are selling faster and faster and then as they go higher and higher that means they're selling a little bit slower Sometimes the drops are roughly correlated to a sale, but that tends to not hold true with these faster selling items like this one. If you're looking at slow selling items, sometimes you can actually see those individual drops. But right here, just kind of showing us over time how fast this item is selling. Next thing I want to go ahead and show you here is the new price. So this is tracking the lowest price between all new offers over time. And you can see right here, there's not a lot that we can learn. We can see, you know, the new price is fairly consistent, drop down here a little bit, but this new price really isn't exactly what you want to be looking at on Amazon because this new price, it includes all the different ways you can buy products. So this includes your FBA fulfillment. So that's when you're getting it shipped directly from Amazon to the customer. It also includes your merchant fulfilled. So that's when you ship directly from yourself directly to the customer. And so we as Amazon sellers, at least my personal preference is selling pretty much all on FBA. So that's the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and flip on here is these little orange triangles. These track the price of the FBA price over time. So this is showing me the lowest price that anyone who is selling via FBA had, you know, right here we can can see that July 18th, it was priced at $31.94. That was the cheapest FBA offer. And just kind of my initial gut reaction when I'm looking at this item right here, I can see that there is pretty good amount of price consistency. I like to see that. This means that over time, I'm going to be way less likely if I buy this item, if I can buy this item profitably at $32, I see a lot of price consistency. And so hopefully that means that pattern is going to hold out while we're buying our inventory, waiting for it to come into stock, that that price is going to stay consistent. If you see a lot of fluctuations can be something to stay away from. The next thing I want to go ahead and show you here, is the buy box. This pink line right here shows you exactly the price that these sales on this item are going to. So you can see right here, the new price and the buy box aren't always the same, which is why I prefer to pretty much always look at the buy box price line when I'm sourcing. So right here, we can see the buy box where we just click add to cart is at $30.99. And if we zoom into our Keepa chart over here, we can see the exact same thing. The buy box is at $30.99. And it looks like actually a couple days ago, a week ago or something like that, the price was at $31.93. So the price has actually gone down a little bit. Hopefully the price comes back up. These sellers start to make a little bit more money, but that's just kind of the things we're looking at here. This super flat buy box price line right here tells me that this item is super, super consistent. There's not a lot of times where the price is going low and we wouldn't be making a lot of profit. So this kind of stuff is really what you want to see. You want to see that consistency in pricing here. And then the next thing I really like to look at when I'm looking at these listings is the bottom box down here. This bottom box is going to show us the new offer count. It'll also show you the used offer count if you're selling books or anything like that, where your used offers are a little bit more prevalent. And right here we can see June first, you know, we've got 49 sellers right here. And then recently we've got, you know, 51 sellers, 52 sellers. Today, it looks like we have somewhere around 55, 56 Amazon sellers. The actual Amazon page is telling me that there's 57, including a used offer. So this tells me that not only is the price consistent over time, but the number of sellers is also consistent over time. So if you're going back to your, you know, your middle school economics class right here, we can see that the demand has remained relatively consistent. This green line here, you can kind of draw that line of best fit, you know, really 
really taking you back to high school math class here. We can kind of draw a line as I'm mousing along here, maybe somewhere around like right there. So that shows me that that line is pretty flat. The sales velocity has stayed pretty consistent and our supply has also stayed pretty consistent. We're right around that 49 to 55 seller mark pretty consistently. So this tells me that if these things hold true, this item will continue to stay very similar to this. Something I'm gonna break down a little bit in more detail is something like this, where we have an item, you see the new offer count went from eight sellers all the way up to like 30 sellers or so as of late. This is the kind of patterns you want to avoid. Again, we'll break that down here in just a second. Once again, looking at this item here, that's a lot of the bare bones basics that you need to look at on these Keepa charts. Sometimes I also like to throw on the review count right here. This is another way we can kind of infer how many sales are happening. You can see pretty gradual increase over time. Let's go ahead and throw this one off as well. Almost a linear line where we can see the review count is increasing. It's reasonable that the review count is going to be pretty much correlated to how much items are selling, whether the review rate out of every hundred customers, maybe two people will leave a review. That's still going to give us a little bit of insight as to how fast this item is selling. So the fact that this review count line is pretty much linear here, once again, tells me that this item is seeing pretty consistent sales. So let's go ahead and head on to the next item here so we can break down a couple more things we want to look at. So I've gone ahead and pulled up this item right here. Now that we have seen the new offer count right here, you can see it's very different from that last item we were looking at. This Lego listing, we know that there's plenty of different sellers who are allowed to sell this item. You know, we can buy it from lego.com or we can wholesale it or we can get it from the local Walmart, right? There's a lot of different ways that we can get this product. Unlike this product right here, we can see very consistently over time. We can even zoom out here to the year view. We can zoom out to as long as this item has existed on Amazon, there's only ever been one seller. So this is an immediate red flag. Pretty much any time you see that there's consistently one seller on the listing, that tells me that it's either being controlled by the brand itself, or in this case, the reason I went ahead and pulled up this item is you see this orange highlighting right here. This shows us that Amazon is actually on this listing pretty consistently. It looks like they may have gone out of stock briefly for a couple times here. You know, back in March, they went out of stock for a couple days. Back in June of 2019, they were out of stock for a couple weeks, maybe a month or something like that. So you can see the entire past history of this item. This is another reason why I love selling on Amazon is we get so much data. A lot of other other small businesses, right? You go out, try to sell your product. You don't know how fast people are going to want to buy that product. Maybe you stock up, you get a hundred units of it. You sell it on day one. You don't want to have that. Then you're out of stock. You're not making money. On the flip side, you don't want to buy a thousand units of something. It's not popular. No one buys it. With Amazon, with Keepa specifically, we can help avoid a lot of pitfalls like that, that traditional businesses would fall into. So for example, this item right here, we can kind of estimate how fast exactly this item is selling before we ever even sell it ourselves. This item right here, we can tell that our competition would be Amazon. So we just want to stay far, far away from this item. Amazon does not share sales with us as third party sellers. That's why I wanted to go ahead and avoid Amazon, avoid selling on this listing. Not only is it pretty clear that this listing is fairly well controlled, you as an arbitrage seller, wholesaler, whatever you're doing, you probably wouldn't be able to hop on a listing like this just because it's being so heavily controlled by one seller historically. So definitely look out for that before you're buying products. You don't want to buy something that Amazon's selling. You end up buying a thousand bucks of it. Amazon's on there. They're not sharing sales with you. That's just somewhere you don't want to end up. And yet another reason why this software is so important for your business. So want to go ahead and break down this item right here. So this is just an example of a clothing item. You go ahead and look at an item like this. And if you're using a sales estimator, I'm using Selleramp in this case, it's telling me that this item is selling 9,000 times a month. That seems amazing, right? But right now we're specifically looking at this bluish stone washed is what they're calling it. The 36 by 30. I find it hard to believe that there's 9,000 sales a month going to this specific color, this specific size. These sales are actually split between the listing as a whole. The same goes for our keep a chart down here. This is actually tracking the sales rank is for the listing as a whole. So that's showing us how fast that this particular item is selling. So when you're looking on Keepa and you look at an item like this, in this case, we know Amazon's on it. So we'd want to avoid it for that reason right away. But if you were looking at an item like this and you see that, oh, it's got a 1000 sales rank, 1000 sales rank and clothing means that it's selling crazy fast. As we see seller amps telling us it's going to sell about 9,000 times a month across all the variations. So when we look at a Keepa chart here, this is showing us the sales rank for the whole parent. It's called the parent ACE basically the UPC code, that unique identifier right up here. This sales rank line is showing us the sales for all of the variations on this whole listing, but we don't know whether this particular variation is getting 85% of the sales or if it's getting 0% of the sales just from looking at this Keepa chart here. So this is where the variations tab of Keepa comes into play. This is where a lot of beginners get tripped up. They're not sure if their variation is going to sell, you know, a different color shoe or a different size or a two pack versus a one pack. You're going to see all kinds of stuff like this as you're sourcing products. 
blocks and the variations tab is going to be a massive lifesaver for you. So once that variation viewer loads in here, we can see here are all of the different variations on this listing. You can see there's actually a crazy amount of variations on this listing. Looks like we've got 700 variations going on here. So now that we know that this whole listing is selling about 9,000 times a month, you could also use a free sales per month calculator if you want to keep it really lean at the start. So now that we know it's selling about 9,000 times a month. We want to see how many sales this particular variation is getting. So I just go ahead and copy the ASIN. Once again, that's the specific barcode. Amazon has specifically assigned this code right here to mean the 36 by 30, this particular color. So I would go over here to ASIN filter. Now we can see that this particular variation has 45 ratings out of, it looks like 32,000 ratings, about 30, yeah, about 32,000 ratings. This one only has 45 of those ratings. So from there, we can kind of reasonably estimate that that's the similar proportion to how many of this particular variation is selling. So in this case, it's less than 1% of the sales on this listing. So in this case, it's less than 1% of the sales on this listing are going to this particular variation. So instead of selling 9,000 times per month, we know that this item sells somewhere close to 90 times per month. That'd be our 1% there. If we want to figure out that exact proportion, we could do some math here. So it's probably selling, you know, closer to 40 times per month, 50 times a month at the most. And another thing you can look at here is ratings roughly equal sales, right? So when you see these ratings are increasing, you can kind of guesstimate that there's sales going on here. That's another way that we can know for sure that this item is selling, but it's not selling quite as fast as a lot of these other variations. So if I go ahead and do that one, we can filter by ratings. We can see which of these are selling really fast. So kind of the sizes and colors that make a little bit more sense. You know, this darker blue, like a very traditional jeans color, 34 by 32. You know, you got your very common jean sizes, waist sizes, people, the colors that everyone likes. If you're looking at shoes and stuff like that, it's always going to be like the black and white ones or the all white ones. Like the most basic variations are typically going to be the ones that are selling best. And when we're looking here, once again, on the ratings, we can see that these better selling variations are gaining ratings significantly faster than that other one we looked at. So that's another way we can kind of infer that this product is actually selling. Kind of getting into the weeds there, a little bit complicated on that one. So I hope I didn't lose you, but I want to make sure you understand variations. A lot of beginners just kind of give up and skip variations. And there's a lot of potential to be made on those listings. So I've got a couple other examples here. This one right away, I want to show you some red flags to look out for. So this listing right here is also a great example of why it's so important to have Keepa. So if you're looking at the item and it looks like this, let's say you're sourcing on August 12th or August 13th, the price would be $34.90. If you don't have Keepa, you're going to think that this item is selling for $34.90. So you can just plug that into your fee calculator. And if, let's say you're buying this for $15.82. looks like our sourcing team was actually looking at this item. In this case, it's like, hey, I'm making eight bucks. I'm making a 52% ROI. That's awesome. That's a good product selling 42 times per month. You know, it's not a home run, but it's certainly a good product, right? But if we go ahead and look at the Keepa chart here, we can see that, you know, it's only been 12 days, 11 days or so that the price has actually been $34.90. Pretty much every time before that, the price was around 30 bucks. So if we go ahead and knock that down to 30 bucks, now we're making $4 profit, but our ROI doesn't quite meet that 35% standard that I personally like to look for. So when we're looking at these Keepa charts right here, it's really important to make sure you're not buying on a price spike. That's pretty much what me and my team call an item like this. It's kind of on a spike, right? It's a little bit more expensive than it should be. If we zoom out here to the present day, we can see right here, you know, we had, this is another going back to your high school economics, right? We can see for whatever reason, the price jumped up. You can see the new seller count on July 31st was at 12. And then it went down a couple. Clearly one of those sellers was the guy who was selling it for $29.99. He went out of stock. And now there's a bunch of other people who are looking at this item. Maybe they didn't have Keepa. Maybe they didn't understand what they're looking at here. They are thinking, Hey, I can buy this item for 15 bucks. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then you kind of see them start to trickle on here. But since they didn't do their homework, they didn't research this item properly. They don't know that this item actually kind of belongs closer to the $30 mark. So all these sellers right here bought in on a bad item. You can see the price started to drop as soon as we got close to that same new offer count here. So as soon as we got back to like 12, 13 sellers, price went down a couple bucks. So now we're at, you know, we're at $32, we're at $32.50 here. People are like, okay, I'm making six bucks, 39% ROI, not quite as good as when I bought it. And it looks like, you know, as recent as today, the supply and demand going back to economics, once again, there's way more supply than we've ever had in the past. So naturally that price is going to find a new kind of equilibrium a lot lower because in the past there was only eight sellers on it. Now all of a sudden there's 28, 20, you know, 30 sellers trying to sell this item. So it looks like the price pretty recently has dropped down to $27. See, we're only making a buck 50, 10% ROI basically. So definitely look out for these price spikes right here. And another thing you can really look at if you want to go to data, you can also look at the average prices. There's a whole bunch of other data on this tab as well, but we can go ahead and look down here at the average buy box prices. So it's a $31 average buy box and a $32 average buy box. So in this case, if we're buying for 31, we were looking at it, it was 35 bucks. So we're like, that's a great item, right? But at the average price, we're not quite as good. We're close to a good item, right? 30% ROI is not bad. At that 
180 day average were a little bit profitable as well. But it's really, really important to make sure you're considering these average buy box prices. That's a great way you're going to make sure that your items are profitable over the long run. And especially when you're looking at an item, if this price spike was a way more aggressive, we'd be able to go in here and be like, oh, it's average price of 22 bucks. You know, we're definitely not making any money there. And so you definitely want to avoid these price spikes right here. This is one of the leading factors to what's called price tanking. And you know, right here, we were at 35 bucks, lots of new sellers coming on, prices gradually falling, and then boom, right here, the price tanked down to $27. So do your homework. That's how you're going to avoid price tanking. Make sure you're not buying items on a massive price spike like this one. And then this example right here, I want to go ahead and show you once again, why it's so important to look at those average prices, right? So if you're looking at this item on, you know, a couple days ago, a week ago, something like that, the price was $57, right? That's amazing. We're buying it for 25 bucks plus some tax. So if we're selling it for 57, once again, we're like, Hey, that's a pretty good item. I'm making 15 bucks, 60% ROI. But if we look back here in the past, number one, the item really doesn't belong at that expensive of a price. If you kind of draw once again, that line of best fit here, we can go kind of, you can draw kind of an imaginary line right here, close to like that $48, $50 price. We'll call it 50, just to be generous. And so now when we're considering those average prices, we're like, okay, I'm getting a little bit lower, 35% ROI. But something that I like to do is what happens if the price goes back to the lowest price that it consistently sold for recently. So in this case, it was pretty consistently selling for $43, $40 for quite a while. So I'm plugging that in. What happens if this goes down to $40? Okay, I'm making no money. So I did a whole bunch of work and I'm gonna make no money if that price goes back down to where it was consistently selling. So that's another, you know, that's a red flag here. In this case, you know, if you've got a bunch of capital built up and you wanna be a little bit riskier about it, you could go for an item like this. I can see the case for it. But if we zoom out here to the full view on this item, we can see once again, this orange right here showing us that Amazon hops on this listing. This orange right there, we're seeing Amazon sells it for 25 bucks. And then last year they were on this listing for quite a while for 25 bucks. So this is another thing that I would look at this item. So number one, I'm looking at this item. It's like, okay, if this price goes back to where it was consistently selling for quite a while, I'm going to break even. And Amazon has sold on this listing, you know, back here in June for a little bit. They sold on it in May. We can zoom in here real close. We can see they were here for a day or two, but it's clear that they like being on this listing. And if we zoom out here, once again, we can see hopefully no one bought this item on, you know, August 7th or whatever, when it was a pretty good item, because pretty immediately right after that, Amazon came back into stock here. So I had two red flags here. Number one, if it goes back to that price, I'm really not making that much money. And number two, Amazon has demonstrated a clear interest that they are interested in selling on this item. So I would want to avoid that item. Definitely don't want to be competing with Amazon here. So those kind of two red flags, two good things to look out for, for why I would avoid an, a listing like this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a ton of value out of it. I know it probably feels like drinking from a fire hose if you're just getting started in your Amazon journey. So watch it back. Go ahead and watch a couple other videos on this tool. This tool is fundamental to your Amazon business. Definitely understand how to read Keepa charts before you start significantly buying a bunch of products. And honestly, a lot of that, you're just going to have to learn by trial and error. You can only learn so much by watching a YouTube video. So if you're several YouTube videos deep, you've been binging content, go try to buy your first couple products. Let me know in the comments if that was you, you're on a YouTube binge trying to get this thing started. Just giving you a little encouragement to get out there and get started. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, I'm always happy to answer those down below. If you want to drop those in the comment section, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff helps me out with the algorithm, but I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.